While walking through Pralin, it's easy to forget just how rare this mythical tree actually is. Even outside of the nature preserves here, you can see them growing just out in the open. However, according to the IUCN Red List, the Coco de Mer is endangered with only 8,000 mature trees in existence, and that number is falling. The number of Coco de Mer trees has decreased 30% in the past 30 years. It takes such a long time for these trees to reach maturity, so much of what we saw in the Valley de Mai were actually young trees that have yet to reach the fruiting stage. And since these trees only exist naturally on two tiny islands in the entire world, those trees are extremely vulnerable. Outside of nature preserves, there are almost no trees that survive through germination. The Coco de Mer has survived for millions of years due to their isolation, but with human contact comes the introduction of a great number of threats. In 1990, a forest fire devastated a huge population of these trees on the Fon Ferdinand Palm Plantation in southern Pralin. It took over 20 years for this site to be reopened to the public. Besides accidental fires, protesters on occasion have threatened to burn down forests over political issues. Around 150,000 tourists visit the Seychelles each year, and about half of them visit the Valley de Mai. With this constant flux of people, it invites plant diseases, pests, invasive species, changes to animal behavior, and damage to plants. When you are dealing with such a fragile ecosystem, a little bit of human stupidity can end up causing a lot of damage. This is why we can't have nice things. L and C, that stands for low life and chump. R, I, really idiotic. R, I loves, I mean, can't even see that anymore. That's how much they matter. Here, there's graffiti everywhere. And up there, we were uh, sitting at like a little uh, shelter where a bird showed up. And the tourists there were trying to feed it granola. It's like, you don't do that. Then that, that bird was like over there because he's probably so used to getting fed that he was just standing right next to them, kind of like looking at them, being like, hmm, gonna feed me. And that's terrible. Like these, this, they're like expecting to be hand fed instead of like doing what they're supposed to naturally do. So yeah, you don't do that. And you definitely don't graffiti trees. Since the Coco de Mer is such a huge symbol for the country, there has been a history of poachers stealing the nuts in order to sell a taste of the fruit to foreigners. But an even greater threat is not curious travelers, but impotent men that are hoping that the colonel will stimulate their desire and desire. Since the trees are so tall and the fruits are hard to access, poachers have reportedly cut down entire trees in order to get access to that fruit. Completely destroying a plant that has taken decades to produce that fruit. Since we're doing, we're looking into the Coco de Mer, we're probably not going to be able to eat it. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Maybe, have you had it before, like growing up? Yes, but at the times, uh, they are plenty Coco de Mer. Now, when people starting to chop the trees and put it down and, and then they make a stop and yeah. I think uh, Coco de Mer is coming in the CITES protections under the CITES. Very protected, you, you very good control. Uh, you're not allowed to take a Coco de Mer out of the country mm. without the, the control. You should be quite in a deep problem. Right. So the government has uh, a record of all of the trees that exist. That might be what this number is for. I'm not entirely sure. But even if you have a Coco de Mer that's growing on your property here, anywhere in the Seychelles, the government wants to know. Originally, I heard that you can ask really nicely to somebody who's growing it on their private property and that person can share it with you. People can't sell it to you, you can't buy it, but somebody can share it with you and that is like a legal gray area. Well, according to the staff over at the Valley de Mai, that is no longer the case. It used to be like that like 10, 20 years ago, but especially in the past few years, they've really gotten very strict with uh, 
poaching laws here. So they don't want people doing that because that helps uh, support the poaching industry. Also, I found out that the kernel, the inside of the fruit is no longer sold for Chinese traditional medicine. And even like the government doesn't do it. At least that's what the staff over at the Valley de Mer said to me. You can buy the hollowed out Coco de Mer. They sell that at souvenir shops all over the place. They sell those at the Valley de Mai as well. They take the fruit, they cut it open, they scoop out the kernel, they do something with it, I don't know what, and then they glue the nut back together and then those are sent out uh, to souvenir shops. If you get a Coco de Mer here, it needs to have an official symbol on it. There's a little sticker that they put on it to show that it is not a poached Coco de Mer. So people could very easily just like go out and steal them and sell them to tourists, but then you'll go to the, uh, to the airport with it and when you go through customs, they'll see that and then you're gonna get a huge fine or arrested. Poachers also have a hand in this shell game and will sometimes use either forged or reused stickers in order to make their nuts look official. If you are looking to buy a Coco de Mer, be sure to get it from a legitimate place. The Valley de Mai only sells top quality specimens, hence their high cost. But less visited places like the aforementioned Fond Ferdinand Plantation can have lower grade nuts for sale for as low as 250 US dollars. So if you're not too picky, you can still get a bargain. I've heard that there are actually bootleg ones that are just kind of like dubious looking. They are not actually Coco de Mer. They're just like made out of wood, but they make them look like it. Uh, so be careful that when you're going to like a souvenir stand that you're getting the legit stuff, that they have the right paperwork and you're not taking home just an expensive piece of wood. Other efforts have recently been taken in order to protect the Coco de Mer, including an increase in the penalty for harvesting and selling the illegal nuts. For a long time, the fines were negligible enough that many poachers would just take their chances, but when I visited, I was told that that is no longer the case. Formerly set at around $387, the penalty that can be imposed on anyone caught poaching the iconic nut has now been raised much higher. The new minimum penalty is around $1,930 up to a maximum of $38,670. A two-year prison sentence can also be imposed on the culprits of such offenses. To say that the Seychelles have a complex relationship with the Coco de Mer would be an understatement. It is an important resource to the island that brings in tourism, and the sale of the nuts alone brings in hundreds of thousands of dollars each year. Yet, at the same time, the country has gone to great efforts in order to protect and restrict the sale of the fruit. There is a gray area where selling the shells and a liquor made from the kernel may be considered acceptable, but selling a taste of the fruit at a festival well, that goes too far. There is a very thin line between what is okay and what isn't, and during my trip, I found myself towing that line. So I spoke with somebody working over at the Valley de Mai to learn some about the legality of it. It was pretty interesting. Uh, first off, I asked if I can interview her, and she's like, no, 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 I need to ask my boss permission. Like, they're very sensitive about this sort of thing. And it makes a lot of sense because you're dealing with something that is, uh, there's a lot of legal gray areas with this, and I'm sure she didn't want to say anything that uh, she can get in trouble with. <laughs> so you do have to be very careful here not to say the wrong thing to people. And she didn't want to get caught saying the wrong thing to me. When I brought up the Coco de Mer in conversations with Seychelles people, they were excited to talk about this facet of their culture and share with me their experiences with the fruit but it would also bring up a lot of nervous smiles. Sometimes people who I'd be having a conversation with would suddenly completely change the subject if I started talking a little bit too much about the Coco de Mer. During my visit to the Seychelles, I stayed at a number of different guest houses. This was really helpful in making this video because it would connect me to locals who were able to give me some really valuable advice. 
I was amazed at just how welcoming and friendly people were to me and how they were willing to go out of their way in order to help me. Just want to like point out how amazing and polite everybody is here. So Steven and I, here's Steven. Hello. We were like walking just like up back to our, uh, our hotel or to our guest house and a car slows down like, you guys need help? We're like, oh no, we're just looking at the plants. And the woman in the car is like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I used to be the minister of uh, education here. I've got some contacts over the botanical garden. Here's my number. You should call it. I can hook you up with people over there. You could do an interview. And it's just like, like, we're total strangers. New York City, you know, that car would have just like probably veered into us and like run us over. <laughs> but here they, they slow down and they try to help you. <laughs> have you ever been, have you ever seen people like so friendly? They're very friendly. It's like insane. Yeah, and she, and she wanted to give us a ride to the south end of the island for free. Yeah, she's like, we'll bring you there. <laughs> That's how friendly people are. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this guy just stops and says hello and he compliments yeah. the way that Steven's hat looks. It's amazing. It is a good hat though. It is a good hat. <laughs> However, I can't shake this image from my mind of a conversation that I had with one of my hosts. She and I were laughing about my fruit hunting trip when I asked her if she had any advice on how to legally eat the coco de mer. That smile just fell straight off of her face. Her tone suddenly became very serious and she said something like this to me. Here's what's going to happen. If you continue to ask around about the Coco de Mer, eventually somebody is going to give it to you. And then you are going to make your little video and that person who gave it to you will get found out and then fined or arrested. And then you won't be allowed in the Seychelles anymore. Everyone would like to test the Coco de Mer. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say we've got about 300,000 visitors. In another year, all the Coco de Mer are gone. Oh, sure. But you can't do that. Eh? You must uh, protect it to you have uh, stabilized uh, this population. So how are you feeling about this, Stephen? I'm filming. Uh, good. Well, I mean, I wouldn't like to try one, but I'm still very happy to be able to experience it. Yeah. Well, wow, look at this beautiful one right next to me. Those are huge. Oh yeah, look at that. This is the only place in the world where this specific giant nut exists. And uh, I'm glad I can check this off my bucket list. Yeah. So on a scale of like one to 10, where 10 is getting to eat the Coco de Mer and being <laughs> satisfied, and zero is being completely disappointed and not finding anything. Where are you on the happiness scale? Well, I'm pretty happy. I mean, I haven't gotten to eat one. Maybe it's seven, six? Yeah, I think I'm at like a seven. I think if we wanted to get one illegally, we probably could, but I, I don't really want to do that. No. Yeah. We're, we're good people. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure a lot of people do it, but yeah, we can't, can't do it. I don't want to be a Captain Planet villain. You know, I don't want to contribute to poaching. I don't want to do any of that. I hope that this is enough to see just like how amazing that this tree is, how cool this fruit is, how much like history and mythology and everything is so, so cool. And I think like even that is, that is so much bigger than the taste of the fruit itself. I would love to taste it, my God, don't get me wrong. I would love to taste this fruit, but if I can't, uh, this is still, I, I'm having such an amazing time here. I'm enjoying this so much. So if this fruit does interest you, I would say, you know, come here, check it out don't eat it <laughs> you don't want to eat this thing but you definitely want to see how this thing grows if you have any interest in fruit or nature or just like interesting places around the world or if you have none of that interest this is still fascinating to learn about following in the footsteps of explorers of the past i set out to the other side of the world in order to find what some believe to be the tree of knowledge but in this journey of mine, I found out that that forbidden fruit is forbidden for a reason. Locals in the Seychelles echoed that notion at the very mention of me wanting to eat the Coco de Mer. It is forbidden was a common refrain that I heard again and again. But as with anything, after asking around enough, I did find a devil 
that hinted to me that they could arrange a tasting. I met somebody who actually seemed like they had a Coco de Mer that they could uh, offer me to eat, but they made it pretty clear that it would be illegal, okay? So it would be something that uh, I'm just like not comfortable doing that. that. That would be very, very illegal. It's supporting like an evil industry. It's an endangered fruit and you don't want to mess with that stuff. So um, I decided not to. I am almost positive that with a little bit of bribery, I would have gotten a taste of the fruit that I had traveled so far to find. I thought for a moment about giving in to that temptation. I tried to convince myself that with so many Coco de Mer around and with confusing regulations that it really wouldn't hurt for me to try it. I was there for science. I've reviewed hundreds of fruits and I needed to document the flavor of the Coco de Mer. It would be for the greater good. But when I thought deeper about it, I realized that if I were to do that, I would actually be supporting a greater evil. The tree is a very fragile link to the past. We are lucky to have it as a living reminder of what the world was like millions of years ago, as a connection to the mythology of so many countries, as an impressive example of the wonders of evolution, and as a specimen of how big, heavy, and bizarre looking something from the earth truly can be. That is so much bigger than money, or medicine, or taste. As a fruit hunter with a mission to document all of the fruit in the world, I feel that it is important to also document the fruit's flavor. And although it pains me not to be the one to do it, I will leave you with this. Do you remember what Coco de Mer tastes like? They do not have a, a special taste, eh? The taste is just uh, sweet, like coconut? No, or? it's not uh, sweet. A little bit like coconut. 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 Tender coconut. Uh, coconut yeah. eh? So what does it taste like, if you don't mind? Coconut. It just tastes like coconut? Yes. Like a little bit stronger or sweeter? Sweeter. Much it's... better than the number of coconut. Okay, so it's like a strong, sweet coconut taste? Yes. But it has like a gel consistency? This one is much better. And when you eat it, you want to keep it more. You want to keep eating it? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. You tried the Coco de Mer. Mm -hmm. uh, when did you try it? I tried when I was 11 years old. 11 years 11 old? 11 years old, yes, because we have a big tree to my neighbor next to my mom's yeah. house. And usually it's forbidden to eat this. Mm -hmm. But when we are children, and the bigger one always want to test it, and we cut it down in secret, and then we try it. Okay. Yeah. Was it good? It was very, very good. Yeah. What did it taste like? Do you remember? It tastes like the jelly. It tastes like a jelly. This, does it have, taste like coconut? Mm, a little bit like coconut, but not really. Uh, like sour or bitter? No, no, no sour, no bitter. Just, just, just a nice sweet. Just nice sweet, yes. Oh. A bit similar to the coconut, the normal coconut, mm -hmm. when it's small, small, but just a bit stronger.